All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we are going to pick up where we left off. So watch the first part of the video. This is the second part of the video. And now that I know that my pencil lead will show up in this new, better lighted surface, I have some lights coming in from the top here that are better illuminating the surface from previous videos. Now we want to proceed here and construct the Fibonacci spiral and get our Kepler slash golden triangle with five proportions and then move on to the trigonometry. So what I'm imagining is that I'm going to finish the Fibonacci spiral in this video and then I'm going to move on. I'll stop there, take another break and then move on to doing the trig in a third video or maybe even a third and fourth video. But we're going to go from right here to the Fibonacci spiral in this video. And we'll draw in the Kepler slash golden triangle. We'll talk a little bit about Fibonacci numbers and phi. And then we'll probably stop the video. So that was the roadmap in debate terms. If you're a debater, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to now. All right. So let me point out one thing that I, I didn't point out in the last video. I stopped before I pointed this out. And that is that if I draw just one more line, ladies and gentlemen, one more line. I will have two perfect squares. Now, where would I draw that line? Looks like I have a rectangle. But remember, there's a relationship between circles and squares. And that is, a circle is a platonic shape. And the platonic shape touches this circle of 360 degrees, touches the square at four points. Right here, right there, right here, and that's what we're going to use, and right here. So I'm going to use that point. I'm, I know that if I draw a line right through in between these two circles, I'll have two squares, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to line up the center of this flower with the top and bottom of these circles with the center of this flower. And that'll create another straight line. Now, if you're doing this along with me, let me uh, let me draw this in first so you can see where I'm going to put the the ink. I'm only going to draw the line right here inside the rectangle. I'm just going to draw it in as dark as I can so you can see that I've got two squares. Is that clear? So one square above, one square below. As above, so below. Great movie. Great horror movie. But it also has a lot of esoteric, mythological, alchemical meaning. All right. So this is a – here's our center circle. That's the first one we drew. This circle can be inscribed by a square, right? And this circle is going to represent one, ladies and gentlemen, one in the Fibonacci sequence. So at this point, it would be, it would be useful – to take this, set it aside for a minute. You can see all the ink that bled through, whatever. And I'm going to just do a mini tutorial on the Fibonacci numbers. The Fibonacci numbers, it's a sequence. And the sequence is, and I can never remember if there's a zero. It doesn't matter. The sequence is zero, which we didn't draw, one. And then you add, what you do is you add these two numbers together to come up with the next number of the sequence. So one plus zero is one. So there's another one. Okay. Now, one plus one is, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, two. Two plus one is, you guessed it, three. Three plus two is five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus five is 13. 13 plus eight is 21. This will continue forever, and the numbers just get bigger and bigger and bigger. But here's a, here's a key point, and this is worth mentioning. Here's a key point. If I was trying to find this little tiny calculator that I was using, um, oh well, doesn't matter. I'll use this calculator. So these numbers are interesting. These numbers are interesting, and they relate to this. And I'm going to explain how. This number here, 1 and 1, that's what's going on in this picture right now. 
one, one. So these are the Fibonacci numbers, one and one. And now I'm gonna draw two, which is gonna be a, a, a square right here. And then I'm gonna have three, which is going to be a rectangle made up of these two squares and this square that's going to appear next to it. And then we're gonna proceed on. So that's that we're actually creating visually the sequence that you see before you. Now, when we get to phi, we will exploit or examine a very strange coincidence. Now, phi, phi is a number. Okay, big surprise. Phi is a number. This is, by the way, phi. You can write it with a circle that has a line going through it. That's not right. It needs to be straight like that. That's phi. Or you can also draw the lowercase version of that Greek letter phi like this, more or less. Okay? My Greek lettering is terrible. Doesn't matter. This is a this is a number. It's a constant. And if I were to draw this number out, if I wanted to write this number out in a form that would always produce the exact answer, I would say 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. That gives me phi. So let's do that. Okay, I'm going to use this four function uh, calculator that might as well be from the 1980s. I bought it for like a dollar at a dollar store or a convenience store. I can't remember. So clear out the memory and then say, uh, if I want to take the square root of 5, I type 5 and then hit the square root. And that gives me the square root of 5. Now add 1 to it, because I said it was 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, so plus 1. That's 3.2360679. Now divide all that by 2. And I get the phi number, which is 1.6180339, blah, blah, blah. It goes on forever. So what this equals, and we'll only take it out to a few a few decimal a few decimal approximations so it'll be 1.61 just reading it right off the calculator 1.618 we'll just take it out there so that's phi that is phi phi it's a number. Like pi is 3.14159. This is 3.14159256, I think. This is phi, not pi, not pi, but phi. 1.6180339. Now, okay, that was interesting that I could do 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. That was interesting. But what else can I do? Well, let's take the, let's put, Let's take the ratio of these numbers and see what happens. See if there's a relationship between Fibonacci and phi, the Fibonacci sequence in phi. And there's a very interesting convergent property that emerges. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 1 by 0, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to divide 1 by 1, 2 by 1, 3 by 2, 5 by 3, 8 by 5, 13 by 8, and then 21 by 13, and I'm going to see what I get. Well, it only becomes interesting. If I divide 1 by 1, I just get 1. I believe this is undefined, uh, so we'll just start with 1. 1 by 1 is 1. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is not 1.6180339. How about 2 divided by 1? 2. How about 3 divided by 2? Cut 3 in half, you got 1.5. You should be noticing, I started with 1, then I jumped up to 2, now I'm at 1.5. Well, what's 3 divided by 5? Well, I have no idea. So take 3, pardon me, I said, I said 3 by 5. Divide 5 by 3. 5 divided by 3 equals 1.66666 forever. So we'll just type or we'll write 
repeating. How about 8 divided by 5? 8 divided by 5 equals 1.6. Now we're getting somewhere, right? The phi number is appearing. Uh, it's not repeating anymore. It's just 1.6 evenly. 8 divided by 5 comes out to 1.6. All right, how about 13 divided by 8? One point six two five. One point six two five. All right. Now let's do twenty one divided by thirteen. Twenty one divided by thirteen. That gives us one point six one five three eight four six. One point six one five three eight. I'm getting close to my my phi number. If I had continued the Fibonacci sequence out, let's take it out another couple of digits. 21 plus 13 is 34. So there's my next Fibonacci number, 34. And let's take it out one more. 34 plus 21 equals 55. Okay, so let's find the ratio of 31 to 21, or 34 to 21, and then 55 to 34. And let's see if we don't start to converge upon that number right there. That's what I want. Okay, so 34 divided by 21. 34 divided by 21 gives us 1.619. Okay, it goes on. 1.619. Very close to 1.618 now. Now 55 divided by 34. 55 divided by 34. 1.6176. So now, within a, a thousandth of a decimal, I have rounded up. I could round up to 1.618, but I'll just write it out. 1.6176. I should tell you, the Fibonacci sequence will never equal phi. Not exactly. It can't. But it will get very close. And what's happening, ladies and gentlemen, is that there is, this is called a convergent series. The Fibonacci sequence is a convergent series, or the Fibonacci sequence series, rather, converges. It converges on a number. And here's how it looks. It kind of looks like this. This is what's happening. Okay, it's converging. It's, it's, it starts out wild, and then it converges on a number, and that, that number that it converges on is phi. It never gets there, but it converges on it. It's asymptotic. I think I heard it expressed. If you know what it, asymptotes are in mathematics, it's asymptotic. The series converges on phi. Okay, we show that here. We, we do the ratios, and we see that the ratios of these succeeding Fibonacci numbers converge on 1.618.0339 forever and ever. But it never gets there. But that's what we're going to exploit visually in this drawing. Okay? That's why we have to draw several. We have to keep going. We, if we stop right here and we draw just the, the one more, if we just draw a square right here, we won't have the golden number because we're not there yet. Right? When I draw that square, I'm only getting a ratio of 2. I need to draw more and more and more. I'm only going to get up to 13 in this image because I don't have a big enough piece of paper to continue on to 21. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It'll be close enough for, for, for the purposes of this demonstration and the trigonometry that we're going to do. But that's what we're doing. So quick, quick background of what we're doing. All right. Let's continue. And now that I know you can see with pencil, I'm going to use a pencil because, ladies and gentlemen, that was... Horrendous that I was not able to correct those errors. So I have a compass here that has a pencil lead in the end right there. And I'm going to create a square next to these two squares. Square, square, one, one. So Fibonacci sequence will be one, one, two. And then what results, the whole thing will be inscribed in a rectangle of three. And then I'll draw another square up here and then it'll just get bigger and bigger. You'll see it. And then we can draw our Fibonacci spiral, and we'll be done with this video. So let's do it. Take your pointy end, take the pointy end of the compass, and put it down here at the edge of the square. Okay. Now, extend the compass angle until the top of it is at the top of your rectangle that you formed. And bring down, don't make this a, a hard mark, just bring this down 
and make kind of an, an arc. Okay, I'm drawing it in darker than you should because I want you to see it on the camera. Now, go up here, just flip it around. It was like this with the pointing end on the bottom. Now make the pointing end on the top. Put the pointing end at the top of the rectangle now. And starting at the bottom, create a another arc. Okay, so here's what we need. Now, what we need to do is we need to e extend out our lines and then put a line here to create a square. It will be a perfect square. So let me just extend out these lines. Cool, right? Now, these two points can be connected to make a square. I actually want to come at it from this side because just like those others, I, I want to brush up against those two points uh, in a tangent fashion. And that will make our square. Oops. And keep pushing my own. Okay, do you see the square emerging? There's a square. Let me erase the little guide marks I made. And then quickly continue so you don't get bored. We do want to finish this. So now I have a square, but let's keep referring back to Mr. Fibonacci and Mr. Phi. So I've got one, one, and now I've got two. Well, I also have three. Oh, here it is. One, one, two, and then the whole thing is three, that whole rectangle. So I need to go next to the next number in the sequence. I need to make five. Well, here's what we do. If you're starting to see a pattern emerging, that's good. Okay. Now, So just like before, when I made my compass, the distance from the edge of our 1-1 one, one squares to each other to make a, tri a rectangle, and then I use that to make a square, now I'm going to make a bigger square. Okay, And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to turn this little wheel until I make my angle of my compass, or the arc, or whatever it's called, the distance from to the edge, to the edge of this new rectangle here that I formed. I'm going to put the pointy end right here. Okay. What I'm going to end up doing is creating a spiral that goes, starts here, goes around, through, and over here. So I'm put, put my pointy end right at the edge of the square. And I'm going to bring up a line. Now, this arc will actually form part of the spiral. It might be helpful at this point to show you that um, we could have all, we, we also form part of the spiral there. But um, now, so you can make that line a little bit darker. But this one I'm going to, now, I had the compass like this, now I'm going to flip it. I'm going to have the compass like this with the pointy end over here. Right? This is how I'm going to make my new square. 
I'm sure there's a geometric term for this, but guys, I never took geometry in high school. I mean, I did, sort of, but not really. So now I'm going to just very lightly, because this, is, this doesn't have anything to do with the Fibonacci spiral, so I want to be able to erase it later. But very lightly, I'm going to draw that guide mark. Now, I'm going to extend up, using my straight edge, my line here. I'm just going to connect the dots until it crosses that line. That's what I'm going for. Okay, I've extended that up, and now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to extend this up as well until it crosses that line there. And I'm going to form a, a, another square, and, and you'll see another rectangle is formed as well. Now connect these dots up. Oh, easier to come at it from the top. I want to connect this point right here, which is the top of a circle, to with this point here, which is the top of a circle. It's important that this is correct. Okay. Just darken it in a little bit. And we see now that we started with 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, right? We're, we're doing our Fibonacci numbers. 1, 1, 2, 3, or 1, 1, 2, 3, doesn't matter. But the Fibonacci sequence is emerging out of this. Okay, now I want to just show you one quick thing, and then we'll continue. We're, we're on a roll, as they say. So let me just go back here. Make your compass the diameter, of, uh, or rather the, the length of this square. And then place the pointy end, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Come back in. And you can draw in this line. Come back in later with a marker and make it better. But for now, you can just draw in this line. So we've got our spiral emerging. Then I'll, I'll I'll do the same thing here. I'll I'll draw I'll make it darker. All right, cool. Now inside these circles, it won't be it won't be possible to see this without using a marker, but this will continue in in this fashion, like that. So let's con let's continue to finish off our Fibonacci spiral. So if you're kind of following along with the logic of what I'm doing, the next thing I want to do is make my compass the distance from here to here, the top, here to here. So place the pointy end at the bottom right here. And then increase the compass length. This is why it pays to draw small circles to right there. You want to be back on the line. And then you're going to go this way.
I'm just going over it a thousand times so it's nice and, and clear. I'll zoom out on the camera since we're getting we're creating larger and larger images here. There we go. Now I'm zooming out. Okay, so you can see our Fibonacci spiral has emerged. This should be a point where you can pause the video and clap for yourself if you're doing this. You have done something incredible. Okay, and what I'm claiming is that we have now reached a point of 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, what, or 5, 8, 13, 21, where we are, we are, we are honing in on the phi number which is important because the golden ratio, the golden mean, the golden triangle, the golden number, blah, 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 everything golden, none of it happens until you kind of get up there in the sequence. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. You need to be in the 13, 21, 34, 55 range before all of your ratios will converge on phi. Well, I'm claiming that we're close enough right here. We just need to finish off these rectangles. So I'm going to extend out my, my line to impact the Fibonacci spiral. I'm just going to darken it in now so that's clear. And as I stated before, the camera, if you're looking at this, the camera is making these angles look slightly acute, but they're not. I'll just draw it in darker so that whatever visual distortion is happening because of this camera is compensated for. Uh, by the width of the line that I'm drawing. I got to figure that out because we're doing trigonometry and here and it needs to be it needs to look accurate. Okay. All right. Now, let me darken in here. Okay, and then uh, extend out the, I want to extend out this line here, but I'll show you if we've got to do a little little intermediate step before we know, see, I don't know where, where this point is. I could, you could say, well, just put your, put your compass there, but that's not good enough. I, I don't know where, you know, is it like, is the compass, is, or the straight edge supposed to go like this, 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 where is it? We can find that easily. I have my compass set to this length. So all I need to do is place it at this point right here, pointing end up top, and make a little mark. You don't have to draw a full arc. Just make a mark right there. And that, is, if I line up this point right here, and this point right here, I'll have, I'll complete a square. See that? I'm completing a square. And now we'll just darken in our, all of our lines for the camera. All right, now even though the camera does show to me distortion when I'm looking down, I'm looking down, it shows distortion, but on my paper it looks, 
and on your paper, if you're doing this along with me, it will look exactly true. Um, I, I'm going to compensate for that visual distortion because I want it to look true to the camera. But on your paper, you'll see, aha, uh -huh, he's right. There's something wrong with his camera, but on my paper, it looks true. Uh, I can I can just play a little game here with the, the visual field to make this appear more true. Okay, I hope that, that helps a little bit. All right, so now we have the Fibonacci spiral and we have the one, one, two, three, five, five, eight, and then if I continued on 13, or maybe, I can't even remember, maybe it's one, one, two, three, or sorry, one, one, two, three, five, eight. I don't think that's right. I think it's one, one, two, three, five, eight. And then if I continued out, I don't have enough space to do this. See, I've run out of space. There's the edge of my paper. But if I continued out, I could continue this spiral all the way around. But you would need to start with either a bigger piece of paper or even smaller circles. And we're approaching the limits of the human hand to draw small circles. I'm sure it's possible, but for the purposes of our demonstration, we are golden. Pun. All right. That was a phi pun, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm making jokes about math. Now, we want to construct the triangle that we're going to use to evaluate it trigonometrically. Okay. So what we're going to do is, in order to do this, we have to understand a little bit about geometry. I need to find a, I need to put a circle inside this because. What I'm, I'm going to show you is that this distance is phi. The, it's a ratio. The, the, it's a phi ratio. And this distance, this is a golden section right here. The section right here. So this is the golden section. But I want to prove it. So I am going to take my compass, and I'm going to create a circle right here. How do I do that? How do I do that? Well. I need to find the center of this square. How would, I, how would I find the center of the square? Well, you could just analyze it visually, but in geometry, if you take a square and you connect the diagonals, you'll find the center of the square. So very lightly, because we'll erase it later. I want to find the center of the square. So just connect the diagonals and you'll find the center of the square. Right? So the center of my square is right there. Great. Now I'm going to draw a circle inside the square. So I need to change this, make it narrower, and I'm going to put my pointy end right where I found the center of the square. And I'm going to inscribe a circle inside of it just to show you that it can be done. And here's what I'm doing. I'm I'm putting my I'm making my distance like that to the edge of the square, and now I can inscribe a circle inside of it to prove that it is a square. If it's not a square, it won't work. But this will only touch the edge of the square. The circle will only touch the edge of the square at four points, and it does. It does. So we just proved that that's a square. We proved it geometrically. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I need to bisect the square again, but I need to bisect it this way. So let me get here. I need to find the line that goes through right here. Now notice I have a problem. Where do I put the straight edge? I don't have this, I need a hash mark here or something. I, I have no guide. So that's why we constructed the circle, because we can create a guide. Remember, I did this before, 
But let me go over here and if I put the point just right, spin this sucker around, make a little hash mark right there. See that? Now go to the bottom of the square. Make a little hash mark again. Oh, I didn't do it far enough. They need to intersect. Okay, right there, that point, this point right here. Where those two lines come together, that's the point I need. So that's a guide mark. Same thing over here. Let me just check the distance, make sure it's right. It is. So go over here to the edge of the square and make a little hash mark. Make a little hash mark right there. Spin this sucker around, spin the compass around, put the compass at the edge of the square up top, and then also find that point. Okay, so there it is. There's that point right there. So that would create a midpoint line right there. So I'm just demonstrating. So now I want to create a midpoint line right here. So what do I do? Just continue making midpoints. I place the compass here and I make a little mark here. The bottom. Do the same thing on the other side. Yep, that's the right point. Now go up top. Make a midpoint line. And then do the same thing from the other side of the square at the top. Just to make sure. Alright, now you see you see how I've got all I've got all the midpoint lines I need. I only need to draw this one. For now, if I was going to continue drawing Fibonacci squares, I, I would need this midpoint too. But right now, I need this point here, the center dot right here and here. I'm going to line those up, and that's going to make a midpoint line. That passes through those three points. This doesn't have to be a, a real dark line because it's uh, it's just going to be used as a, a distance measurement. I'm going to use that now. Now, to make the Kepler or Golden Triangle, what you do is draw a diagonal from that midpoint down to the bottom of your bigger square. So just watch how to do. Put your pencil up here at top. Swing this. Swing your straight edge around until you're at the diagonal. And then draw a soft line. Right there, just draw a soft line. Okay, now that distance right there that is going to be, we're going to increase the diameter of our compass until we're at that distance. Okay, so what are we doing? We're why are we doing this? We are constructing the Kepler or golden triangle. Okay, so I've got my distance there. All right. Now, the reason I needed to draw, ladies and gentlemen, this other midpoint is for this step right here. So take your straight edge and make a very, just make a very soft midpoint line. Just like that. Soft. I'll draw it a little darker so you can see it, but you don't need this line for anything other than this one little step. Take your compass. Now you've got it to where the distance is right there. Is that is that diagonal made by the bisected line of the square? Take that compass with the pointy end on the bottom and place the compass point right there at that other midpoint. And before I do this, this is the moment of truth. I have not tested this. You're watching it in real time. Ladies and gentlemen, moment of truth, drum roll. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to see if I actually have five proportions. If I do, when I put this compass down, it's going to be right here. If I don't, then it's going to be embarrassing. 
Look at that. I have five proportions, ladies and gentlemen. It works. Math works. It's beautiful. So I know I have five proportions. That's fantastic. So what am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a phi triangle. How am I going to do that? You ask. Well, let me show you. Okay. So what you do is you take your compass point, okay, put it down there, put it down there, put the point of the compass down there, and then take the, you see what I'm doing? That is phi. That is phi proportion. So now that we know, I mean, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is, let's go back to our, real quick, before we before we finish off this triangle. I just want you to know what we're doing. You can kind of get lost in a blur of images and, and my voice. We are about to construct a triangle based on this number. All right? With, with some interesting properties. We'll talk about the Pythagorean theorem here in a minute. But let me get back to this picture so we can finish drawing it, so you can have some sense, sense of closure before we end this video that you have, in fact, constructed the phi triangle. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit more because I can't see the whole thing, and that's annoying. All right, we'll go out to there. All right, let me get everything straight on the camera and center it. Great. All right, now, here's what you need to do. And I hope I can do this. My compass may not be large enough. I'm actually fearful that it isn't. You need the compass to go from here all the way up there and touch the top. Will it? Will it? Really? Let's see. Oh, good. It does. They make extenders for compasses, but better to just... So what I'm going to do is you see how I've got my points here? This is the whole golden section, by the way, right here. There's the golden section. There's part of the golden section, there's the other part. The ratio here is phi. So now what I'm going to do is put my pointing end down here, the bottom of this square, and come up and put the other end, the pencil lead, at the top of this golden rectangle. By the way, this whole thing is a golden rectangle. So now I'm going to draw a line that comes down and impacts the side over here. That's what I needed to do. This is just a guideline. It doesn't need to be dark. But you need to know where this, where the pencil lead is right now. That point right there is important. So mark it in a way that you know where it is. Then take your straight edge and connect. See what I'm doing? I'm going to put my pencil there where the arc of that line impacted the axis or impacted the edge of the golden rectangle. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle, or pardon me, I'm going to draw a triangle. This is going to be the golden triangle that we're going to evaluate trigonometrically. I'm going to draw the triangle by completing a diagonal from that point all the way down to the edge of, to this point right here, to the edge of my golden rectangle. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to draw it in darker. Okay, that's the, this is the golden triangle here. Now, I want to point something out to you, okay? If this is phi, 
and I'm claiming that this distance is phi. It's a ratio. Now you're saying, well, if I actually measure it with a ruler, it's not 1.618. No, no, no. It's a ratio. It's a phi ratio. If I am making an arc, right? Think of this as the radius of a circle. If I'm making an arc and I come down here, right there, that means this distance, do you see? With the, the distance, that line that I drew, that's also phi. If this is phi, then this is phi. It has to be. I didn't change the I didn't change the angle of my compass, so this is phi. I'm making a circle, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what we're going to use when we do the trigonometry. But just so I want you to know, this distance is phi right here. So let's label it in, and then we're going to label the length the sides. We don't know. Like the trigonometry problem we're going to solve is, what are the angles here? What are the radian measurements here? We're going to solve all of that. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be in a different part of the video because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of coffee and my throat's getting sore because I've been talking for 45 minutes. So I'm just going to darken this in and then label the proportions that I'm uh, creating so you know what you're dealing with. Erase some things so it looks nice and clean and then darken in the Fibonacci spiral so you see that. And then we'll have the Fibonacci spiral, ladies and gentlemen, and we will have the golden triangle with it labeled according to the five proportions. We know that this is the Fibonacci sequence. We have a golden rectangle. We have the golden section. So we really got a lot of information packed into this image. And we started, ladies and gentlemen, with sacred, ge sacred geometry, with these circles, which if I wanted to, I could just expand out and out and see where all the interesting correspondences are. But it's okay. We've got, we've got what we wanted, which is our golden triangle. So I'm going to shade in, ladies and gentlemen, this golden triangle. I'm going to shade it in. I want to darken the edge. This is supposed to be gold. It's actually yellow. Now you can barely see that. I need to use a different color. Uh, da, 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 da. I guess I'll use orange. Orange will work instead of... I just want to show you the golden triangle. And this should be beautiful, like I hope it is. So our golden section, our golden section is formed by, let's take another, a couple, another, uh, we'll use red and green for this. The golden section, this is part of the golden section right here. This distance, that's part of the golden section. Based on phi. So this piece plus this piece equals phi. So call this A, call this B. A plus B equals phi. So now, using red, I will... Show the remainder of this. So this is going to be length B. So kind of, if you're one of those uh, visual people, green plus red equals phi, or A plus B equals phi. And what I'm, what I showed before is that that's the same distance. So this is also a golden set, a, a golden distance here, because this is phi. I don't want to use the word hypotenuse, but I will this one time. If you're looking at this triangle right here, the hypotenuse of this triangle is phi. But we're going to look at this as the radius phi. 
this distance right here is 1. Again, it's a ratio. It's a ratio. This distance right here is 1. So this distance right here is 1. This distance right here, this distance right here is phi. And if I use the Pythagorean theorem, I can find this right here, this distance right here. So what is that? Well, let's use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, take, a look at, take a look at the image so far. Right, we have the hypotenuse, which will be C in our Pythagorean theorem. If we say this is A, and I say this is B, and I say this is C, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, I don't know B, so that's what we'll be solving for. Let's go back to our scratch pad. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, we know a. a was 1. a was 1. c is phi. So a is 1. 1 squared plus b squared. I don't know that. Equals phi squared. Okay, so if I want to come up with the solution here, what I need to do is rearrange the equation to where I've got B by itself because I'm solving for B. So I'm going to subtract out 1 squared. Then I've got b squared by itself. b squared equals phi squared minus 1 squared. Okay, well, phi is a number, ladies and gentlemen. Phi is a number. It is 1.618339. So let's compute it on our calculator. I take 1.618039 times 1.618039. I get 2.618037. So that is, I'm going to bring my equation up over here. So I'll just redraw what I had already drawn. B squared equals phi squared minus 1 squared. Well, what I'm what I just found is that phi squared is 2.618033 minus 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1. Okay, so that's just 1. So if I subtract 1 out of the number I have down here, I find something very interesting. I find that b squared, b squared, key point, equals 1.618033701514. Now, it's not exact. But do you notice there is a strange relationship going on? Phi equals 1.618033.9. B squared, according to our calculations, equals 1.618033701514. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you within some critical approximation that B squared equals phi? So the square root... If I take the square root of both sides in order to get b by itself, square root of b squared 
equals the square root of phi. So I get b equals square root of phi. And I want to leave it in that radical form, square root of phi. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, it turns out that phi is the only number, ladies and gentlemen, where the square root of phi, let's actually take the square root of phi. Or I should say the the pardon me the uh, phi number has an interesting relationship. Phi is the only number for which phi plus one equals phi squared. So that's why there was that interesting relationship going on. So this is b. That's our missing side. So let's go back and label it. It's square root of phi. So I love how we have everything in terms of either one, unit one, or phi. Okay, so we have C, the hypotenuse of this triangle is phi, the height of the triangle is square root of phi, and the base of the triangle is one. So one square root of phi, phi. Wonderful, beautiful, incredible. Let's shade it in and call it a day. And just take a moment Guys, take a moment to congratulate yourselves, to uh, appropriate some well-earned laudits and plaudits on your achievement here, because you have achieved something. If you've taken this journey with me together today, then you have achieved something incredible, and you, are, you have earned well the right to praise and acclaim. So let's shade in our... our golden triangle. This is called the golden triangle. It's also called Kepler's triangle. You know, there are a lot of YouTube videos out there. There's a, a YouTube creator named SGD, and his channel stands for Sacred Geometry Decoded. And he's the one who created uh, tutorial videos that helped me learn how to start drawing the sacred geometry. He talks about the Vesica Pisces, and he constructs a lot of things based on that. We used, we were, what we did today built on his videos. So I'm always in debt to whoever SGD is in the world for creating those videos. If, if you want to watch those, they're very interesting. He, he, he goes into more depth on the esoteric nature of the phi relationship, and he talks a lot about golden uh, ratios, and he, he shows lots of examples. He doesn't do much with the trigonometry of it. That doesn't seem to be his area of focus, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Uh, that's why I made these videos, because I wanted to take you know, his work and, and take it to the next step. So kind of that, that, that statement, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, I, I could never have gotten here without that guy. So I'm always thankful to him. And we're just shading in this golden triangle. Just shading it in. I guess I should have probably erased these lines. Now it's going to be hard to do. I don't want to erase the spiral line, though. Huh? Oh, well. We're going to go over it at the end with a Sharpie, so it's okay. Anyway, the fact that this should be so, I think the fact that you can start with some circles and a compass and get here to some real mathematics is remarkable. And those of you who know me uh, or have watched my other videos, you know I'm not a mathematician. I'm terrible at it. I'm terrible at what I'm doing right now, shading. I'm not an artist. I'm not a mathematician. But I am trying to make math out of art 
or use R to make math. So uh, it's it's too bad that that the universe has has picked me to be the messenger of this information to you because I'm I'm really not the one, right? I'm not the guy. I'm not the qualified individual to explain this. I'm not even the qualified individual to draw it. You know, I have when I show this to students, they take five seconds and they create a much more beautiful image than me. But Ladies and gentlemen, this this is good enough. I always want to apologize on these videos for not only the quality of the video and the audio, but any mistakes that I've made while I'm talking to you. Like, uh, And I welcome, please, in the comments, if I've said something wrong along the way, please correct me, right? In, in science, we always want to be proven wrong, right? That uh, should be the case anyway. There seems to be a cult of scientists out there who don't want to be proven wrong, and that is not science. Science is a skeptical field, and you know, sh mathematics uh, is the same way. Like, if I've done something wrong, I want to know about it. I don't want to not know about it. There, you don't need to protect my ego. anyway, we have uh, emerging here a beautiful triangle that's shaded in. And then we'll be done with this video. I just want to finish shading this in, and then I want to shade in the, or draw in a nice dark line on the Fibonacci spiral so you can see that in the image as well. All right, so now we've 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 shaded in the, the this golden triangle here, and I'll just go over it, make it a little bit darker for the camera. Okay. I mean, I, I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> kind of has a kind of uh, three-dimensionality to it now with the shading. And now I just want to draw in the Fibonacci spiral to show that it's there. And for that, I need a black Sharpie. So I'm going to fit this black Sharpie into my compass so I do this correctly. Oh, this one's not going to work. I need a need a different black sharpie. Let's see if this one works. No, oh, we'll have to make do. Oh well. Okay, so now I've got my sharpie. Right? And I'm going to draw in the Fibonacci spiral.
All right. And now I narrow the diameter to get to this square here. I'm going to be careful because the Sharpie is not really at the right angle. And I don't want to mess this up because we've done a lot of work. Okay, I'm just changing the diameter of the compass ever so slightly in order to make the, the line bold. Okay, and now I'm going to continue. Change the diameter of the compass again. This is where I'm very concerned because the Sharpie isn't really long enough. We'll see if we can do this or not. I just have to play with it. Okay. And now in here, I have to admit, I cannot make, because of the Sharpie, see the Sharpie? If I try to make it narrow, this isn't long enough. The point is too far down. I won't be able to make the angle that I need, so I'm just going to freehand this. Uh, and hope I don't screw it up. All I'm, If you want to freehand it, all I'm doing is I'm going to, because these are little squares, I'm just going to make an arc. I'm just going to make an arc that connects them connects the spiral as it's going in. That's all I'm doing. Oh, wait, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. I don't need to freehand it. I don't like that. That's not clean. Go back in here with my Sharpie. And remember, if I find the midpoint of this square, I can do this. Just find the midpoint of this square real quick, and I can do this. Or the midpoints of this square. I'll erase this in a sec. I'm just going to freehand this, doesn't matter. Okay. Now. So now if I put my if I put my point right there, because of the nature of what I'm doing, um, I know there's a way to do this. I'm just I'm trying to Oh, well, I'm not going to be able to do it. I thought I could do something fun, but I can't. Maybe there's a way, and I just didn't see it, but we'll just freehand. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. And then...
And there's your, there are your two or interesting shapes. We have the Fibonacci spiral. We have, well, we have sacred geometry right here, the flower of life, the seed of life, the germ of life, Vesica Pisces, all that good stuff in here. We also have the Fibonacci spiral. We have the golden triangle, or sorry, the gold, I just drew a rectangle and called it a triangle. We have the golden rectangle, and we have the golden triangle based on phi proportions, one square to phi, phi. Remarkable. I think it's fun. We're going to stop the video here and take another break. When we come back, we will take this triangle with the phi proportions and evaluate it using trigonometry that will give us radian measurements, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, all that good stuff. So we're, we're, we're going to we're going to end up doing work that looks a lot like this, okay, using that. And that's, that's a wonderful fusion. That's a wonderful synthesis, I think, of the phi, Fibonacci stuff, and the trig stuff, and sacred geometry, all three domains kind of coming together. And if you remember, just as a, a final little coda, if you remember... These are the proportions, 1 square root of phi phi. That's the proportions of the Great Pyramid at Giza. And so we're actually evaluating trigonometrically. What I've done is I've created, I've recreated that, this half of the Great Pyramid Triangle. If I were to just reflect that whole thing over here, I'd have that Great Pyramid Triangle. But... That's what we created. We created that half just now. So uh, let me just center this for a moment of Zen. So you can just ponder on what you did. I'll turn it again. In the description, I will have high resolution images of this. And we'll end there, and uh, we will come back in our next video to do the trigonometry of it.